the West Coast Swing by teaching you the three basic patterns. What's up, gang? It's Brian B. And Miss Megan. From West Coast Swing Online. And in this video, we are going to teach you the three core patterns for beginner West Coast Swing. You're going to learn the sugar push, also known as the push break. You're going to learn the side pass. There's actually two of them, the right and left side pass and the eight count whip. So all patterns in West Coast Swing are a version of these three patterns. Would you, would you agree, Miss Megan? I do, I do agree. Good deal. So we're gonna go through this. We'll start with the sugar push, also known as the push break. We're gonna uh, demonstrate it, then we'll show the leaders and followers footwork. You'll be able to follow along with both of us. We'll each narrate our parts. And if you have any questions, since this is a live video during the lockdown to the coronavirus, well, we're not fully locked down, but a live virtual workshop during coronavirus. Uh, this is live both on Facebook and YouTube. So if you have any questions, uh, please type them in. Mr. Benjamin will feed them to us at the appropriate time. Awesome. So the three patterns you're gonna need to learn for basic West Coast swing are the sugar push, also called the push break. If we counted this, this would be one, two, three, and four, five, and six. The next basic pattern would be a side pass. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. That's called a left side pass. Then there's a right side pass. Same footwork for the follower. That's the side pass. And the third pattern we're gonna learn today is the basic whip. This is an eight count pattern. It changes things from the six count basics. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let's talk about a couple of quick overall basics uh, for West Coast Swing in these three basic patterns. The first two steps of West Coast Swing always start with a walk, walk. The middle two steps are the ones that might vary. The last two beats are what we call an anchor step or a triple step in place. And we're gonna talk about those in the appropriate place. But let's talk leaders footwork first. I'm gonna cozy up to the camera. So leaders, in the push break or sugar push, it's a synonymous name, technically it's called a push break, but the popular term over the years has become the sugar push. I might use those terms interchangeably. So leaders are gonna walk back for two steps, two small steps for one, two. We're gonna do a triple step for three and we're gonna walk forward for count four and then we're gonna have a triple step in place five and six so if we did that again slowly left foot moves back for the leaders one we walk back for two we triple step three and four we triple step in place five and six like we said before the first two beats are always a walk walk right so that's the first two beats walk walk the middle two beats in this case are a triple step three and we walk forward for four and the end of every west coast swing pattern is what we call an anchor step triple step in place cool so if we gave that numbers one more time oh one two three and four five and six now we're going to switch sides and have miss megan go to that side and the front and Miss Megan's gonna narrate the followers footwork for the sugar push or push break. All right, so followers, you're gonna be using your right leg. You're gonna walk forward with two steps. We have forward, forward. Then we're gonna go together, together, step back, and then triple in place. So if we did that again, we have forward, forward, together, together, back, triple in place. Let's do that with numbers. We have one, two, three, and four, five and six. Cool, so connection wise, if we look at the basic sugar push, this is a little tricky for West Coast Swing. We have two basic connections we're gonna manage. One is called an away connection. We might call that leverage or, or rather tension. Uh, and then when we connect forward, we might call this compression or towards. We just like to use the terms away and towards, right? Those are the two connections. So that's a good way to practice your connections in the sugar push. So we're gonna grab this with an underhand grip for the leaders. I like to remove my uh, left index finger, almost like a pistol grip. Follower is going to hook on over top with her fingers. Now, as I lead back, I'm going to offer, I'm going to switch to the side this way. I'm going to offer this hand up as a wall or a stop for the follower. So as I walk back, I'm initiating Megan towards me as we dance one, two. She runs into that wall. We triple step in place three and, and as I walk forward, I'm sending her away for count four. We click into that connection and we anchor five and six. Now I know we might be going a little fast and this is a live video, so if you're watching it live, I apologize. If you're watching this on tape delay, just rewind and rewatch slowly. There's a slow motion button here on YouTube. So we walk back one, two, we triple three and four, we anchor five and six. So the concept of the push break or the sugar push is basically if Megan was on roller skates and I pulled her, what would happen? She would roll until what happens? Until I stop her. And she wouldn't go back the other way until I initiated her back. So that's what's going on in this sugar push or push break. 
in our basic West Coast swing. The leader's initiating back. As soon as I initiate, Megan's on the way. Two, three, and four, five, and six. Any thoughts on the sugar push, Miss Megan? Um, just that I am not going on my own. I am waiting for the initiation here to start. Um, and then I am definitely connecting forward and not moving until I am sent back for four. Bingo, that's what you're looking for. So this is not what we call a self-generated dance where once we start in motion, we keep going. This is very much at the end of every pattern, at this case, the end of the anchor step. Megan's in what we call an anchored position. And by definition, our centers are moved away. We feel some connection through our arms and we're connected here so that as I move my center back, you can see Miss Megan's moving. That's a good drill to, to show that we're connected. So as I, <laughs> as I move back, I initiate Megan for one, two, three and four, five and six. So that is your sugar push or push break, your kind of most basic pattern of West Coast Swing. I would say it's the one we use most often. Do we have any questions at this point? Yes. Is the term sugar referencing the first two steps of a sugar push or puck or does it refer to a type of diet? So the question is, does the what does the word sugar push refer to? And it harkens back to the early days of Lindy Hop as West Coast Swing evolved from Lindy Hop. Whole different discussion. If you're interested in that, you can uh, Google West Coast Swing history, find our video on that. There's a couple of them. Um, but basically, it's what's called a sugar foot, a swivel for the followers coming forward. So if Megan swiveled this, she would swivel. Uh, Megan oh, the first two swivel, steps. swivel, swivel, swivel. She swivels, swivels. That would be a sugar <laughs> foot and that would be called a sugar push. So by technical definition, if she does not do a sugar foot and a swivel, it is by technical definition not a sugar push. However, over the years, so many of us missed that piece of history. We started calling it a sugar push. So now if you hear the name sugar push or sugar uh, or push break, it's really the same pattern. Um, there's no difference, but that will give you the technical difference. Any other sugar push slash push break questions? Another. So more on the push break. How does this become a push break? It's because I'm breaking away to an open position. So if I was dancing this in closed position, right, I would be breaking away to an open position, which is the position that uh, West Coast Swing is danced in. So probably the most common functionally used pattern is the side pass. The side pass is going to give us a lot of different options. The most basic side pass is the left side pass, one, two, three and four, five and six. We also have a right side pass, which is also known as the underarm turn. So let's quickly cover the uh, left side pass for the leaders. So leaders, let's go this way so I don't mess up your footwork. So leaders, I lied, I'm going back the other way. <laughs> we'll keep the leaders on this side. So leaders, as I'm stepping back, I'm stepping back and I'm curving out of the slot for count one. I'm out of Megan's way for two. I triple three and I step back in the slot for count four triple five and six. If we do that again, leaders curl out for one, for two, the follower passes on three and four, the same triple step in place, five and six. Cool beans, let's have Megan cover her footwork. We'll go back to that side. All right, so followers, you're always gonna be starting with your right foot. So we also still have those two walks forward. We have walk, walk. Now we're gonna go side, cross, back, and then triple in place. Let's do that again. So we have walk, walk, side, cross, back, triple in place. I'm gonna do it one time from this side. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So let's demonstrate it once here, then I'm gonna talk about a term that I've used a couple times called the slot, and we're gonna define that for you guys. So I'm dancing oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So our connection, we talked about our away connection. We're using that away connection. We're maintaining this away connection the entire time. So if I took my footwork out of it, I'm maintaining a constant pull to direct Megan down the slot. Now, what is a slot in West Coast Swing? The best way to do it is straight at the camera so you understand. This is our slot. Imagine two train tracks. What's happening in the side pass, the left side pass, is I'm getting out of the way and then back into what we call the slot. If I did it again, I would get out of the way. Five and six. So in West Coast Swing, the slot generally belongs to the follower. The follower is using this slot up and down. 
lucky you. Um, and the leader has to vacate the space to let the follower pass. So on the left side pass, this is a great, easy, basic pattern. It's not the coolest pattern you're gonna ever do, but it's very important to learn, and I use this with my students. If you can do a, a well-connected left side pass, you're actually doing really, really well in West Coast Wing. So, left side pass two more times. Walk one, walk two, triple three and four, anchor five and six. Walk one, walk two, triple three and four, triple five and six. That is the left side pass. Now, if I were to get out of the slot to the other direction, that would be called a right side pass or an underarm turn because the follower is moving under the, under the arm. So the left side pass, follower passes the leader's left side. The right side pass, the follower passes my right side. So let's do that two times, the right side pass. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So for the followers, good news, our footwork doesn't change. It's the same thing. She's rotating slightly to her left. The footwork's the same. We'll cover that in just a sec. But leaders, if the follower is going to pass on my right side, I need to vacate the slot to my left. So I step down and back, kind of diagonally, for one. I want to cross this foot over nice and tight for two. Another way I teach my beginner students is to come together for count two. That's a nice, easy way to do it. We go back and together. As Megan passes, I triple step three and two. Four, so I'm in the slot the other direction, five and six. If I do it from this side, she's passing on my right side, so I step back one. I either cross or bring my feet together, either way will work. We triple three and four, I'm on the other side, we triple five and six. So if we do this, um, let's just run through the footwork, then we'll talk about the hands. So if you just wanna practice the footwork, that's great. Oh, one, two, three and four five and six, oh, one, two, three and four, five and six. Now, we're gonna talk about how we lead this and then Megan's gonna talk about what she recognizes and your thoughts around this. So to lead this, what I want you to do is take this hand, rotate it in your follower's hand till you can look at your wristwatch. Back in the day, we used to have watches on our left hand before we had iPhones and that was a normal action. This action here is what's happening as she's going under the turn. So a good rule is by count two, I want to be in this, this, uh, this position. And it's good to practice just doing this with your followers hands because what you'll find is you'll hold on to it, weird things will happen. So you want to practice till you can go my fingers to her fingers. Easy way to do this is the, remember the, the rock star grip? Yeah, man. That kind of grip. Yeah, that's the rock star grip. I was I thinking call it. bull. And I love you. And I love you. Is that I love you? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Super cool. The I love you grip. I have now, that's way cooler than the Rockstar. I mean, the Rockstar grip's cooler, but the I love you is better. So, <laughs> if you guys are watching live, you haven't seen our videos, we have the rest of our West Coast Swing Online team, Mr. Benjamin, the voice of West Coast Swing Online, and Miss Emily, the prettiest one of the group today, oh. we have determined. <laughs> 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 Anyways. So we're gonna, well, I'm ranking you amongst all of us, ahead of all of us. So that's the, that's the grip. So what's gonna happen? I want that by count two. One, two, from here, now I can go over Megan's head. That's why we also call this the underarm turn. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So we currently have the sugar pusher push break. That's our first one, that's this one. One, two, three, and four five and six. We have the side pass, two different versions of a side pass, a left side pass, three and four, five and six, and a right side pass, three and four, five and six. The final of our basic patterns is the whip. Now at this point in West Coast Swing, everything has been a six count basic, and this is why West Coast gets tricky, is because the next pattern has... Eight counts. Eight counts. Maddening, if you're new. Maddening, I'm with you, but we're here to get you by. Here's the whip. <laughs> The whip looks like this, one, two, three, and four, of five, six, seven, and eight. So let's try that. We're gonna do that from this side for the leaders. So good news leaders is the first four beats are a lot like your right side pass. We're gonna step out of the way for one. We're either gonna come together or cross. Either one's comfortable. I think together for beginners is a little bit better. One, two, we're turning around for three and but instead of stepping in the slot, we're gonna to step to the other side of the slot for count four. So let's do that again. Followers, you can watch along with Megan. One, two, three, and 
four. So I'm on the far side of the slot. There's space between my feet. Now we're going to walk, walk for counts five. Counts five, slight step to my right, into the slot for six. Then we're going to anchor seven and eight. So we're going to count this two ways, in walks and in triples. First time in walks. Walk, walk, triple step, and walk, walk, triple. Do it again. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's the leader's part of the footwork. We're putting Miss Megan out in front. All right, so followers, our footwork changes. So we are gonna walk forward uh, for count one, and then we're gonna turn backwards. So we have one, turn two. Now we're gonna go back, together, forward, and let's do that much one more time. So you have one, turn two, back, three, and forward on four. Now we're gonna turn around for five, step back for six, and then seven and eight. So let's do that again. We have one, two, three, and four. Turn, five, step, six, seven, and eight. Cool beans. So to lead this, I'm actually gonna do this from this side. Leaders, what I need to do to lead this, I need to lead Megan forward for one and turn that hand in kind of what we call a J-hook lead, right? We lead forward for one, we're still connected to one, and I turn that hand back. That's the lead for one, two. So while my feet are doing back together, or back cross, my left hand has to be leading one, two, one, two. I'm gonna pick this uh, Megan's left shoulder blade up in what we call a closed position. That's just on her, let's turn around ESPN 360 cam, right underneath here. Megan is going to, what are you gonna do with that hand? I am going to, uh, are you talking about the elbow? Yeah. Okay. So one, two, you're either gonna sneak it right over top or you can sneak it over top the other direction. So one way or the other. Nothing goes up with the hands, so, or really with the elbows. For sure. So that's one, two. We have one, two. Now on three and four, the follower needs to go back together forward. So my hands have to go back together forward with my forward. So leaders, my hands have to do this on three and four. So let's add that in. We have one, two. I've got my partner. Three and four. Now you notice I'm across the slot. If you guys have ever done any ballroom dancing, this looks a lot like a basic closed position. Megan's over my right shoulder. From here on count five, I'm gonna look to my right. So Megan will step sideways and back for five. She continues for six. On count six, I'm back in the slot. Megan's slot, seven and eight. Let's do it one more time from the side. One, two, three and four of five six, seven, and eight. Let's do it once from the other side. Let's see if I have any live questions. I've got some resources for you guys. Oh, one, two, three, and four of five, six, seven, and eight. So anything you think about, um, how do you know it's a whip? How would you know that it's not a six count pattern? Uh, well, the first clue is knowing all my patterns, uh, footwork wise, and then this uh, lead going forward, back. At this point, I should relatively know as a follower that that is a whip. Yeah, so one of the tricky things, this is a very lead and follow dance, right? Leaders are leading and followers are following. So people always get confused. How do you know if you've learned only six count patterns that it's an eight count pattern? Quite frankly, you have to learn your core patterns. I think these are the three core. There's definitely more. We're going to do that in a follow-up video. If you're watching live, we're going to cover some of those in the next workshop. Um, and we'll link that video at the end of this if you're not watching live. But push, pass, and whip, you have to know that footwork. Then you have to start to recognize what's coming, right? So I'm gonna do this from this side. So as the follower, and you, when you feel this forward back lead, your brain is gonna click into, I got it, this is my whip footwork, off you go. Does that make sense? So if you didn't know that there was a whip footwork and eight beat basics, in West Coast Swing, you would virtually not be able to follow it. I don't care how good the leader is. So you have to know the basics of footwork. So if you guys are new, um, here's my recommendations. Practice your footwork by yourself. One of my drills, we've done this a million times in the studio. Oh, I need to be close. Yep, we go one, two, three, and four, and a side pass is next. Left side, pass, three, and four, and a right side pass. Right side, pass, three, and four, and a whip is next, and a whip, two, three and four, five, 
six, seven, and eight. That is the number one biggest thing. So even though we're on lockdown due to the coronavirus, you can absolutely up your game with West Coast Swing by mastering the footwork of your three basics. From there, it becomes easier to sort out things like um, connections and actual leads and actual follows. Cool beans, so quick recap. Any other questions we got? So we have our sugar push or push break. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Remembering we're underhanded grip. Leaders are gonna offer this up as a stop. One, two, three, and when we send the follower away, we don't send with our arms. We send with literally our bodies and a step for count four, she runs out of space, we click on, what's the last two beats of every West Coast Swing pattern? Triple step, that's our anchor step. So that's our push break or sugar push. Next pattern to learn would be our left side pass, passing the leader's left side. Two, three, and four, five, and six, and the third, or this two and two A, two B, two, two A, whatever this is, the two other side 45. pass is the right side pass, again, alternately known as the underarm turn because the follower is passing there. Remember, the key to the underarm turn is flipping this hand up by two, palm to palm, so my fingers to Megan's, uh, the pad of her fingers, so I can see my watch. And then our whip, the key is this lead, forward, back for the leader. While I'm doing my footwork, one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven and eight, and I'm gonna cover one common mistake for the whip before we get out of here. If we do this here, here's the common mistake. One, two, three, and four. If you can see the mistake is, I did not step on count four to the other side of the slot. Remember what we said before? The slot belongs to the follower, so leaders, I have to be across the slot on count four. There are your three core patterns of beginner videos. If you guys have never seen our stuff, we run a great website called West Coast Swing Online. You can head over there, enter your email address on the first page. You'll get 50 free videos. Uh, currently, there are 600 videos for West Coast, Two Step, Nightclub, Cha Cha, East Coast, soon to be Waltz, um, lots of stuff there. So check that out. Always check the description below because we have some cool resources. In the description below, you'll find a link to our beginner page, which has some great free resources for you. Musicality, styling, things that as a beginner you might not be ready for, but there's lots of cool resources. We also have a free ebook you can download um, that has a, a great 200 and some odd resources. So you can click on, I'm a beginner and I'm struggling with connection. We've got a blog post, a video for you. Anything to share, Miss Megan? Uh, it's a great site. We also have um, t-shirts. Like T-shirts. wearing right now. Yeah, so this is, we have this. We've got some cool stuff. And if you guys are watching live, uh, I got it, the face masks. <laughs> uh, well, we're kind of locked down-ish here to the coronavirus. We've got some cool face masks, and uh, a portion of each one of those is donated. Do you know where the donations are going to? No Kid Hungry. To No Kid Hungry. So that's an awesome charity, so uh, make sure to support that. You can grab all that. Uh, click on one of the links below, the little T-shirts. You'll head on over to our store. You can grab that. So thanks, gang. I hope you guys are doing great and being safe. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. Share the love, and we'll see you guys again soon.